What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Links and Locks podcast, the DFS episode. I'm Jason Sobel from Golf Bet. He's Len Hochberg from RotoWire, and we're here to break down the Valspar Championship. Len, it's been at least five minutes since the Players' Championship concluded. We've got another <laughs> five minutes before they start teeing it up at the Valspar, so plenty of time to go over our favorite DFS plays this week. Yeah, I you know I'm exhausted and I didn't even play, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how these guys who played last week uh, get going this week. It should it should be an interesting week. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting week, and I think we have to take into account the players who not just played all four rounds last week at TPC Sawgrass, but the guys who are in contention in the mix coming down the stretch. That's a lot of golf. That's a lot of physical and mental energy they exerted last week, and. How is that going to affect those players? I'm thinking specifically about a Keegan Bradley who finished in fifth place last week, a Victor Hovland who was in it uh, until the last few holes on Monday afternoon. I, is it going to affect those guys? Is it, uh, is it going to be a matter of them, you know, having enough energy left over to continue playing some good golf at the Valspar this week? I, I don't have a great answer to that. I, I think maybe there's good reason this week to, make a few different lineups, maybe one where you go with guys who played really well last week, hoping that they step on the gas pedal and maybe some lineups where you completely fade those players and go with guys either who are coming off missed cuts, who didn't play last week, or who maybe didn't play that well, were further down the leaderboard and weren't necessarily uh, exerting that sort of mental energy down the stretch. Yeah, I agree. I agree with all of that, uh, Jason. And, and Victor Hovland, he also had that, uh, he, he was in that debate uh, too with uh, Daniel Berger. That probably took a lot out of him as well. That was exhausting just to watch that. But yeah, you know, I was trying to look uh, this morning to see, you know, not only what you say, the guys who played all uh, 12 rounds, was it at the players? Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and played until Monday. So yeah, I was caught in, in, at least from the sense, the standpoint of the Valspar, they may have an edge. And then there were guys who actually played Bay Hill the week before. Uh, which was kind of grueling in its own way, not quite as much as the players. Um, so I looked back to the Florida swing and, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but someone like Justin Thomas, who was in the mix much of the, much of the tournament before fading on Sunday, he didn't play either the Honda or Bale. So um, presumably he will not be quite as tired as somebody who did play Bay Hill and maybe even all three of the Florida swing events. So a lot to unpack here. Well, let's start with Justin Thomas. He leads the pricing, which finally came out on Tuesday morning. Uh, Justin Thomas at 11,000. And he's followed by a bevy of superstars. Not a bad field this week at the Valspar at Innisbrook, uh, just outside of Tampa. JT followed by Victor Hovland, Colin Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, and Dustin Johnson, the guys who are over that $10,000 threshold this week of these players. Who are you looking at? Quite frankly, Len, I, I could flip a coin, go with any of these players or none of these players. And I'm not sure I have a great take on this. What's your sense? Yeah, I, I'm not going to claim to to really have a, a sharp uh, viewpoint on this either. Uh, but, I, but I will say that there are two guys among the top guys who did not make the cut. And that would be Colin Morikawa and Xander Shoffley. So presumably a little bit fresher. Uh, you know, they just got the bad end of, of the draw. So, uh, I mean, I think Colin Morikawa, you, I kind of like him almost any time, any sport, anywhere. Um, but certainly this week, uh, even though he hasn't played Valspar before. But I do like Justin Thomas as well. He's only 11,000, not a lot for a top guy. Um, you know, and like I said just a moment ago, he didn't play Bay Hill. He didn't play the Honda. So, yeah, he, he did have this one tournament, but a little bit, uh, a lot of rest before that. And uh, Louis Eustizen has played this tournament well before. He did play all four rounds at the players, but was not heavily in the mix on Sunday. Um, he's just outside the 10,000s at 9,900. Um, yeah, that's who I'm looking at right there at the top. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. I, I like JT every week. And so can JT go to Innisbrook and win this golf tournament? Of course he can. He's certainly good enough to win on any given week. If you like him, go for it. Victor Hovland, uh, boy, I, I'm not sure that there's a player in the top 10. There's not a player in the elite class of players right now who has one single uh, detriment to his game. Uh, most players are in the top 10 because they do everything really, really well. Victor Hovland does everything well except chipping. If he can hit 18 greens in regulation every day, he might be the best golfer in the world, but he gets around these greens 
And boy, whatever greens they are, he has trouble chipping from around the greens. And so uh, that's going to be a little bit of an issue for him moving forward this week. I, I still tend to like Hovland a little bit. If we're talking about guys who are going to be tired after being in contention, at, at least a 24 year old who's been fire on all cylinders for the last handful of months uh, should be able to bounce back pretty quickly. So I do like Hovland more cow again, it, it, just like JT. He's a ball striker. I, I take nothing from uh, what he did last week and missing the cut, the wrong side of the draw. Uh, he basically just chalked that up to uh, bad luck and move on. And I, I think he could have a good week. And then Dustin Johnson coming off a 63 on Monday where it really out of nowhere. And Dustin Johnson's a, a very unique case right now. And the fact that in his last 14 starts dating back to last summer, and this tells us more about ourselves and how we look at players than uh, the players themselves, maybe, but DJ last 14 starts, zero top five finishes. You see that and you go, Oh boy, DJ, former number one player, not playing that well. But you also look at it and say, during that time, he's got seven top tens. That's half of those starts. Okay, maybe he's contending. Yeah, he's playing really well. 10 top 25s. Wow, really high floor for DFS purposes. I like having that high floor. He's not a guy that misses a whole lot of cuts. So uh, DJ coming off that really good round on Monday, maybe. Again, I think it's a good week to sprinkle a whole bunch of lineups and try a handful of different things. But Dustin Johnson, the guy that I like, and then you creeped into those 9,000s a little bit. And I agree with you on Louis Ustase and at 9,900, 17th or better in his last four starts at Innisbrook. He fell off the pace a little bit over the last couple of rounds at TPC Sawgrass, but I, I think he's a nice play as well. Going down the rest of the 9,000s, Tyrrell Hatton, Shane Lowry, Sam Burns, the defending champion, Brooks Kepka, Abraham Anser, Jason Kokrak, Tommy Fleetwood, and Matt Fitzpatrick. Any one of those guys or a few of those guys get you really interested. Yeah, again, it's really hard to, to, to find some separation. Uh, I, you know, I do like Tyrrell Hatton. Shane Lowry is just playing well every week. Um, you know, he might be a, a candidate to avoid because of Florida burnout. And, and, you know, and he even got caught in the rainstorm at the Honda. So he's been in a lot of weather uh, lately. Granted, an Irishman can withstand it, but he's been playing a lot and playing well. Um, he just didn't have it on Sunday, but I kind of think he should be energized coming back to this tournament. This was his maiden win uh, last year and played so well. I think that uh, he'll perk up when he gets on and he'll be the big man on campus at, uh, at Copperhead. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, way down at 9,000. You know, happy to see him miss the cut, at least from the standpoint of he's a guy I could turn to this week and at a pretty favorable price at 9,000. And uh, getting ahead of myself, jumping back up to 9,200, Jason Kokrak. Good history here, still putting well, still has not lost the magical putting stroke that came out of nowhere a couple of years ago. Uh, so those are some of the guys on my radar in the 9,000s. Yeah, I feel very much the same way. Tyrrell Hatton's playing some real nice golf. Uh, doesn't have much of a history in Tampa, but that doesn't worry me too much. Uh, 9,800 is a big price for Hatton, but I think he could have a nice week. Same as Shane Lowry. Sam Burns uh, looked like he wanted to uh, take a week off. He looked like he wanted to be somewhere that wasn't on a golf course this week, but he's defending his first PGA Tour title. You have to go back to those. He has to play. Wouldn't surprise me to see Burns uh, not around on the weekend this week. Uh, and I love Burns's game. I'll be back on him very soon, but I won't have much Burns, if any, this week. And Kokrak, you mentioned Jason Kokrak uh, with a nice course history. There aren't a whole lot of course horses at Innisbrook, but he is certainly one of those guys that uh, is a big hitter. You don't necessarily have to hit the big stick off the tee all the time. I think there's an advantage to being able to hit some long irons into the fairway and still be able to, to get it out there and have a decent iron into these par fours. So Kokrak's a guy that I like a lot this week as well. All right, getting down to the 8,000s, and I'm starting to get into some players I like a little bit more here, uh, including Bubba Watson, who's got some great history, played well for two days or four days, whatever the first two rounds were last week at the players. But Bubba's a guy that really works <laughs> the ball, and, and I think that's what you need at Innsbruck, a guy that can work the ball both ways, and that's exactly what Bubba Watson does. That probably speaks to his success on this golf course in the past. Gary Woodland is maybe my favorite outright play this week. Big number in the markets. He's uh, 65, 70 to one in most books. And I love that number for a guy that was top five at both 
the Honda and the API. I'll have a lot of investment in Gary Woodland this week. And then Keegan Bradley, again, uh, runner up at this event last year. He was in the mix coming down the stretch, finished in fifth place at the players. Just a matter of can he kind of reload the tank and, and get some more gas going into this one? It's a great question to ask. I don't have a great answer, which is why I'll have some Keegan and I'll have some without Keegan. What do you think, Len? Yeah, I you know, I, I feel the same way about Keegan. It's just, I mean, maybe more him him more than anybody else will have uh will will is exhausted coming off the week because of the way he finished because he he didn't win. He really ended on a down note. He he three putted at 17 and then he doubled 18. I mean, beside the enormous expense from this huge purse of losing that, really hard to get over and, and just, you know, be back at the, you know, less than 72 hours later playing competitive golf again. I'm a little concerned about that with him. Um, you know, a, a bunch of these guys, I, you know, you said you really liked the 8,000s. I was kind of struggling in the 8,000s for everything I liked about a guy. Uh, I sort of wondered about uh, him as well. Ke Gary Woodland playing very well, as you say. Uh, not a great course history this week. I'm a little hesitant on him. Keegan Bradley, for the uh, reason we mentioned. Webb Simpson just not playing well at 8,300. Kevin Kisner, uh, he was deep into the mix uh, on Sunday. Um, Alex Norton at 8,700 might be my favorite play in the eights, or, or mm. Russell Knox down at 8,100, even though he was deep in the mix uh, at the players and, and, and he finished sixth. Uh, he's got a good course history here and he's been playing very well this season. All right, let's get into the seven thousands and I'll have a lot of guys in this area. I, I've started making lineups with uh, a lot of times four guys in the seven thousands. And there, I think there's a lot to choose from. We'll get to the six thousands in a minute. There aren't many guys on the, on that bottom level that I like very much. So I've made lineups with four guys in the seven thousands and then two of the uh, upper level guys uh, plugged in at the top of the lineup. And so I, I think that's a good lineup construction this week. I'm just going to reel off. I think I got 10 names here in the 7,000s. So real quick going down the board, Christian Bezadenhut, Aaron Wise, Jonathan Vegas, Doc Redman, Lonto Griffin, CT Pan, Adam Svensson, Mito Pereira, Matt Kuchar, Brandon Grace. I, look, not all 10 of them are going to play really well this week, but I think if you have a nice little combination of some of those names that you can get some value back and, and put them with, who knows, a, a Tyrrell Hatton and a Louis Oosthuizen up top. I think that could be a good way to construct some lineups this week. What are you looking at in the 7,000s? Yeah, there are a few guys. I know, uh, I think the one name that I, uh, that uh, corresponds to what you had, Lanto Griffin playing very well this season, very favorable price at 7,400. I'm going to go a little higher to start off with at Mackenzie Hughes at 7,800. Very interesting to watch him. He's like, uh, you know, he's just outside the top 50 in the world right now. Um, playing pretty well. The, the Valspar can at times become a putting contest. Burns won last for fantastic, fantastic putting. And anytime there's a putting contest uh, that could break out, I'm looking at Mackenzie Hughes at $7,800. Yeah. Terrific short game. Um, Brian Harmon, don't know how he's going to respond this week, but I do like Vegas as well. As you said, Denny McCarthy, Annette, uh, Nick Taylor, uh, somehow he didn't qualify for the players. I don't know how that happened because he's been playing pretty well. So he is not only playing well, but well rested 7,300. I think he's going to be in a few different lineups for me. There aren't too many good players in the 7,000s and up who weren't playing last week in any capacity. He's one of them. And um, I'm not sure how I feel about Charlie Hoffman and Scott Stallings way down at 71, but they do both have good course histories here. Not neither one, especially Hoffman playing well right now. I like that Nick Taylor call. I hadn't thought about him. Just kind of looked up his numbers as you were saying his name. And, and I do like that. All right. Six thousands. I, I'm struggling here. You got any guys that, um, that can surprise this week. And again, we're just looking for value. I mean, if you can get a guy from the six thousands in the top 20, top 30 this week, that's, that's gravy right there. Yeah, I do have a few guys. Um, and, because I do think there's going to be so much variance. I think, you know, the exhaustion factor will play in and some of the other guys who, uh, you know, will miss the cut who guys down in the six thousands didn't play last week. Um, 
you know, Adam Schenk, I was on him at the Honda when he was only 6,100. He's just not playing well, but he's just not that bad. And uh, <laughs> he, he should be he should be playing better than he is, if I can say it like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was 61 at the hunt at the Honda. He's up to 67 here. Talk about inflation. But I do like him uh, as well to at least get to the weekend. And another guy at 67 is Vaughn Taylor. Um, he's made all four of his cuts. You know, he had an injury short in 2021. He's made all four cuts here in 2022. And one of them was at PGA National. He played well here. He was sixth here last year. So I think he is, uh, I, I do like him a lot to make the weekend. Those two guys at 6,700 and Danny Lee at 66. I mean, he was another withdrawal last week. Um, it's always on the radar with him, but when he plays, when he plays four rounds, he can, he tends to have some good weeks. He was top 25 at Riviera. He's played well here. Uh, and he is $6,600. Danny Lee, really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this before, Len. He led the field last week in strokes gain on approach shots, and he withdrew. I, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not even mad. I, it's just it's remarkable. I <laughs> I don't get it, but um, you're right. Maybe there's some value there. I I wrote down a few names from the six thousands: Joseph Bramlett, Trey Mullinax, Wyndham Clark. If you want to take some uh, some long shots there and, and be able to save some money. Those are some guys, especially Clark at 6,100 has a nice little skill set. I believe two made cuts in two starts at this one. And again, if a guy at 6,100 just makes the cut for you, opens up some salary elsewhere. So maybe that's not a bad play, but again, I'm, I'm not targeting the 6,000s too much this week. All right, let's get right into making our lineup for this week. And again, there's, I'm, I'm looking forward to this Len because based on what we just said for the last 10 minutes, there's a lot of different ways we can go with all this. I will leave it up to you with the first pick and uh, where are you going with it? Well, I, you know, I it shouldn't uh, keep us in suspense any longer. I think we were both in agreement. We both like Justin Thomas this week. He actually was playing very well before uh, the players and, you know, just making through, through all four rounds. He was 30, 30, didn't have a great Sunday, but he had a pretty good tournament and there were some nice, you know, he was on TV where, where I was watching and, and I did see some good play from him. Uh, and again, he did not play the two weeks prior. He should be able to regroup quickly this week. I like him this week and with the good course history at the Valspar. Okay. I like that. And like I said, there are a lot of guys in the seven thousands that I like, so we can certainly get a couple of the studs in the lineup and then save some money elsewhere. And I'll do that with my first play and a guy after I reeled off all those players in the 7,000 range that I liked and one that you said you liked as well as Lonto Griffin um, missed the cut last week, which again, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Might be a good thing to take some guys that missed the cut last week. He had made nine cuts in a row before that. So he's a guy uh, with a pretty high floor. He's played well at Riviera, which is a nice little correlation to Innisbrook, I think. And so at 7,400, I think it's a nice price for, for Lanto Griffin. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you the, again, that, that don't look at a miscut from last week as it, as a detriment. It's uh, you know, first of all, we, we tend to take these snapshots and if a guy has one bad week, we fade him. And that that's probably poor thinking just in general, but especially last week, there's just so many, so much variance from last week and guys on just the bad end of the draw that I really don't hold it against anyone uh other than maybe exhaustion but that those are the guys who played all four rounds um my my next pick uh i'm gonna go right below Lando. just mentioned a moment ago nick taylor yeah i don't know how i mean i thought everybody uh in under the sun gets into the players championship somehow he didn't get there but that may work out to our advantage this week um playing pretty well uh i played well at the honda played well at the bay hill and he's only $7,300. He can fit in a lot of lineups. Yeah, like I said, I, I like that play. I hadn't thought of him. I'm glad you brought him up because I think that's a really smart play. Adam Hadwin, fellow Canadian with a similar type of game, has won it in this brook in the past. So I think Nick Taylor is a nice play there. All right, I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of money here. It's not a lot. We've got 8100 per man left to spend for these three plays. I'm going to go to 8500 Another player that I said I liked a lot this week. Another guy coming off a missed cut, but he was on the wrong side of the draw. And he had a couple of top five finishes going into the players in Florida. That's Gary Woodland. I think is a really nice play in 
all marketplaces this week. I, I like him for outrights, top fives, top tens, and I will have him in a lot of DFS lineups. Yeah, I you know, if he uh, certainly plays the way he's been playing recently, uh, you know, I he should be able to play this course well. He should be a good fit for this course. So uh, we, we'll see. I hope that works out. Gary Woodland won this event back in 2011, although the last six years, last six times he's played, nothing better than 40th for Miss Cut. So I, I don't know how to really factor that in. It's like, yeah, he's got some great course history. He's won here. Good vibes, good mojo. He's got some terrible course history. The last six years, he's done absolutely nothing. I, I just chalk it up to, hey, if he's playing well, he can go out and play well at this one. Yeah, very surprising when I, I was I was all set to put him on my list. And then when I saw what, you know, the, the last few years here, it was just just stunning to me. But um, certainly has the game to do well here. So what are we we're talking? We can't go play here to fill out our lineup here. So I'm not even going to go up to the the 9,000s. How about right at the. Um, at 80 at 8100 Russell Knox uh coming off a sixth last week at the players a bit bit of a concern but um but has played well this this season made six of seven cuts and really um strong iron play second on tour in greens and regulation uh that sort of thing never goes out of style he did not play Bay Hill the week before Sawgrass so um I'm hoping that he will, his recovery will be a little bit quicker than some of the guys who played both tournaments all right, uh, we've got 7,700 left to spend. I, I'm considering Kevin Strillman or Aaron Wise, who are both at that number. I, I like each of those guys. Aaron Wise, the guy that hasn't played his best golf, but I sort of want to jump on him while he's still at this price because, quite frankly, I, I think he's going to have a good year and it hasn't happened yet. So you want to buy low, sell high. But instead, I'm going to go a little bit lower 7,500. Jonathan Vegas was a popular selection going into the players. He was in the top 10, put a couple balls in the water on whatever day that was, because all my days are messed up at this point, but it was in the second round, put a few in the water and within an hour had missed the cut. It was a, a really strange set of circumstances towards the end for Vegas there, but I don't like him any less. And again, I, I just wound up taking three guys for this lineup that all happened to miss the cut last week. It might not be a bad strategy. So there we go. We've got Lonto Griffin, Russell Knox, Nick Taylor, Justin Thomas, Johnny Vegas and Gary Woodland. What do you think, Len? Yeah, I think that's a, a good way to go. Uh, there's certainly an argument to avoid the 6,000s, although I did put, you know, point out a couple of guys, but not the strongest plays. So I, I think, uh, you know, a balanced lineup is, is certainly a, a sound play this week at the Valspar. All right. Well, let's hope that we can figure this one out. He's Len Hochberg from Rotowire. I'm Jason Sobel from Golf Day. Remember, you can find the Links and Locks podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast. Download, subscribe, rate, and of course, listen every single week. Good luck with your DFS lineups for this week's Valspar Championship. Here's hoping you guys hit the green.